Hello and welcome back and that is right. Today's video I want to talk about my recommended three best notices to buy for Plex Media Server. That's right, Plex Media Server, for those that aren't aware, and that'd be a bit weird if you're watching this video and you don't know what Plex is, is an application that can be utilized um, on a server or a PC system that allows you to enjoy the media you own. Now, let's be honest, a number of us probably use Prime Video and Netflix and, you know, BritBox and all those different kind of applications, Hulu as well for you guys in the US. But as good as those services are, they do hit the same walls every time. One, you're not in control of what is available because month by month things can change. Secondly, the multimedia that you watch you don't own it, so you might want to come back to it another time and it's gone. And thirdly, they are paid subscription services every month. So if you have them for four to five years, after that, if you stop paying, you lose access to everything. You haven't really got anything to show for it afterwards other than the memories. So a number of us in the last few years, and I say last few years, I'm talking the last couple of decades, almost certainly have our media collection. Whether it's our photos and video, home movies and stuff, or we have stuff that we've bought. We might have DVD after DVD knocking around in our home. We might have hard drives full of movies and we want to enjoy them, but we want to enjoy them in a way that can be enjoyed the same as Netflix. We want all those big thumbnails. We want the descriptions, the cast, the reviews. We want the playlists. We want all that stuff. We want to share our media. And that's where Plex Media Server, I'm going to keep pointing at that box up there, comes in mixed with a NAS. It allows you to install the Plex Media application on a NAS and therefore enjoy watching your media on your phones, your tablets, your smart TVs, your consoles, your PS5s, your Xboxes, your Nvidia Shields. It supports a myriad of different devices, all of which mean that all your family all around the world can enjoy your media remotely. They can sit there, get their remote, watch that. It has playlists, it scrapes metadata for the uh, graphics. It does all of that stuff. And I know a number of you already know what Plex is. And you sat there for the last few minutes going, yeah, we know, we know all of this. Just tell me which of the best NAS is. Thank you for waiting. I've just letting everyone else know. So let's talk about the best NAS is for Plex. Now, I've got to have some rules because even if we looked at just the last five years, there's hundreds of NASs out there. If we go back 10 years, there are thousands of different NASs out there in terms of size, little tiny one base to giant mammoth rack mounts. So you gotta have rules before you break it down to the best of the best. So in order to narrow this down, they have to be NASs that can be accessed by any device. I am talking Mac, I'm talking Windows, I'm talking uh, Android, I'm talking iOS, I'm talking Linux, Ubuntu, I am talking all of that stuff. And I'm talking SMB, I'm talking DLNA, UPnP, I am talking all of the different methods. This NAS has to be accessible by all of those means. They also have to be user friendly, very important a lot of people that want to utilize Plex do not want to dick around and start to learn a whole new language. They want a graphical user interface that can be accessed via the web browser that can be comparable or as easy or indeed as complex as a desktop computer. You don't want to have to knock around in code. You want a graphical user interface and everything to be easy. Also, an uh, a NAS that you're going to utilize for Plex doesn't have to be for Plex. So all the NASs that I'm going to recommend today are NASs that also support all of the applications from the brand. They have to support normal DLNA multimedia applications, so their own media apps, photo, uh, videos, and music. They've got to have a surveillance application there because some people use the NAS for Plex and also to have some security cameras around their home. They've got to support backups for all of their devices because a lot of people maximize the investment on a NAS for Plex for using it to backing up their mobiles, their desktop computers, all the stuff around their house. All of these devices have also got to arrive with a decent enough warranty. I will not settle for less than two years of warranty and also that warranty has got to be upgradable. All of these systems have to be up expandable, which means as your media collection grows, so must it. And ultimately, all of the solutions I'm talking about today have to be available worldwide. So that's it. Those are my parameters. That narrows down thousands of NASs still to a few hundred. So to go further on this, I'm going to break these down into my favorite um, um, sorry, my recommended, I should say, NAS that, you know, for those in the middle, your home user, then I'm going to recommend the best Plex Media Server NAS for a prosumer, and then I'm going to recommend the best Plex Media Server NAS as an ultimate play anything to multiple people at once solution. So again, the, the, my first solution is going to be aimed at those of you who 
Wantaplex Media Server, most of your collection is 1080p. You've got bits of 4K there, but nothing too horrendously complex. My second recommendation is going to be a solution for those of you who want a Plex Media Server that have predominantly 4K media. And the third solution is for those that have pretty much all 4K media and multiple people connecting. Let's crack on. So after that big intro and a big build up, what is my first recommendation? The best entry point uh, Plex Media Server NAS, and by entry what I mean is it will play 4K and 1080p pretty well indeed, is of course the DS920 Plus. It's been my recommendation for about 18 months, arriving at about five to $550, always on offer all around the world in different shops, so you can generally find a very good deal. The DS920 Plus, it's just a great mix of being for a home user or access to things like transcoding, which is the reshaping of files on the fly to uh, non-supported devices. The ES920 is incredibly user-friendly. It is a device that is very good for Plex Media Server, I've got to say. Um, also, the hardware inside, although not tremendously aggressive, is still enough to play anything in 1080p and some lower-end 4K. It has an Intel Celeron quad-core processor there with 4 gig of memory. It's a 4-bay system with hard drives these days reaching up to 20 terabytes of storage. That is an enormous amount of storage open to you. It, that includes if you're going to use RAID 5 or even RAID 6. This system, along with its own support of Plex Media Server, also has Video Station on board, which is a great alternative and free alternative to the Plex Pass paid version of Plex and runs even better than Plex as well. This system also supports MB very well as well. Now, the 920 is by no means the most powerful Synology NAS. It's by no means the most powerful NAS for Plex out there. It will struggle. Once you start hitting things like um, H.265 um, uh, or 10-bit HDR 4K in Plex Media Server, it will begin to show the struggle, as you'll see in my Plex Media Server test back in 2020. But still, for its $500 entrance point there and its scalability, you can just add one drive if you want and start adding more drives as you go, or an expansion. For me, it is the best entry point into the world of professional, I'm sorry, a prosumer kind of Plex Media Server utilization. Next up, we're going to step a little bit out of the home casual market and into something a little bit beefier. This is the Plex Media Server that will be able to play pretty much anything you throw at it. Yes, right at the very top end, if we're talking 400 megabits per second 4K HDR, H.265 or HEVC, highly efficient video codec media, it's going to use a lot of the resources to play it. But if you want a Plex Media Server NAS that is pretty much going to be gunning to play the lot, then this is it. The QNAP TVS 872X or the TVS 872XT or the TVS 872N. The 872 series has arrived in different splintered versions, even with the CPU inside arriving as either an i3 or an i5 processor in four or six cores. If you go for the i6 six core version of this, you are laughing. It absolutely smashed through all of our Plex Media Server testing. It played everything we threw at it. As we got towards the end of the 4K stuff, it has to be said that it did you know, start to use the lion's share of the resources on that single file. But bear in mind, this is a file, the file that we tested at the end was that 400 megab megabit per second um, HDR 10-bit HEVC media file. Now, to put that into perspective, that file in 4K was 30 seconds long and was 1.4 gigabytes for 30 seconds of footage. That means, um, that uh, think about the sheer scale of a 90 or 120 minute movie there in that file that it has to handle there. Very little of your media collection is in that scale. If this is 1.4 gig for just 30 seconds of footage. So you're probably never going to play files that big. But if the majority of your media is already 4K, this is a NAS to look at. Now, I am sure a number of you watching this are getting ready to argue in the comments that 
Maybe I don't want to transcode 4K. Why would I want to transcode 4K? I don't need to transcode 4K. I'll just get the 920. Hell, I'll get an even cheaper NAS than that. Why do I need transcoding? And that's a very valid question and a semi-valid response. However, transcoding isn't just about reshaping files for the hell of it, okay? Two things. One, when you are streaming media, some people are going to be using low-end mobile phones or they're using metered data connections or low-end mobile connections that aren't that strong. If they want to watch that copy of um, the new Matrix movie and they want to stream it remotely to their phone remotely and that you own the 4K highfalutin version of that, for them to try and stream it to this phone is ridiculous. One, they need a better internet connection. Two, and maybe you use it in DLNA, good for you. But two, that's a huge, unnecessarily large file for your phone and its tiny, tiny screen. Consequently, having that file reshaped to be better suited to this device will be better for the bandwidth, better for the hardware, better for the streaming, and ultimately make a much more responsive media experience. Second reason for transcoding is that a lot of the time you are utilizing media formats, again, such as HEVC, that some systems can't play due to licensing problems, due to the mixed um, ownership of HEVC. It's not the same as its previous generation, H.264. H.265 um, or HEVC is a shared patent compression. So that, I mean, all these different codecs I'm talking about, codec, but compression techniques I'm talking about is how they get a movie from the theater into a size that you can watch on your sofa. So some of your devices you're going to watch this media on cannot play the file in its native format. It needs to be reshaped to be H.264 or to become a compressed version that is actually playable on their system due to that licensing constraint. So again, if your media is all 4K and you want to enjoy it on every single device carefree, this is where the TVS 872XN or XT with support of its Intel Core processor and a myriad of other advantages that that system has that I've talked about in other videos ticks all the boxes for me. And finally, right there at the top end, the full insane Plex Media server device, that is the TVS-H1288X. Now, this system plays anything. Just to let you know, it plays anything. I tried the most heavy duty file I could find on my test files, it played it. Not only that, it played that file on four devices at once. This system is phenomenal. It's a Xeon embedded graphics, which is very rare by the way, a six core processor NAS. It also has 16 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 128 gig, which is great. But in terms of its media handling, it is unquestionably the best out there. It's not cheap at three grand, but the H1288X is a NAS that in terms of Plex Media Server plays it all. Now, bear in mind, I should have mentioned this in the previous entry as well, but this applies to all QNAT NASs. QNAT on their application center has support of something called CAYAN or CAYAN, C-A-Y-I-N. Um, it is a licensing codec that allows the system to play HEVC or H.265 files without having to um, transcode them there. Now, that's really, really important as you go into these bigger, denser files where HEVC compression technique is unavoidable on these media files. Now, it comes in two versions. There's a free version for a single license. There's also a paid version that allows you to have multiple licenses, but still nonetheless, this allows you in a QNAP NAS to have a better chance of handling H.265 or HEVC 4K media files. Not only that, but the hardware inside can handle multiple of them. And then on top of all of this, this thing supports the use of graphics cards. That's right. You can install graphics cards inside some QNAP NAS and this is one of them. Now, how you can access the resources in there do differ and more applications are starting to be able to utilize the hardware features of GPU upgrades but this system in its base level can play anything and with its scalability for later means that if you have an enormous number of family members enjoying the media on your server or you are someone that works within the media industry in broadcasting or someone that just wants to share access to an enormous portfolio of media, 
this is the NAS for you. It doesn't come cheap, but it is by far the best NAS right now for Plex Media Server for me in desktop form in the world, hands down. But this has been my three recommended best NASs for Plex Media Server that you should buy at the start of 2022. Bear in mind that if you're watching this in the future in summer 2022, is it sunny? Did that pandemic get a little bit better? You tell me in the comments. But if you are watching this in the future, bear in mind that new releases happen. Therefore, what I've said today may not be true six months from now. Now, this channel prides itself on being the best resource for knowledge on network attached storage on the internet, hands down. Therefore, if there have been a better or newer release, I'd, I would have talked about it. So go through the video catalog. Alternatively, there'll be links in the description to new products as well as an article that breaks down how we picked all three of today's NASs for the best Plex at the start of 2022. So do check that out. If you want to learn more, click subscribe and the bell to be notified. As we go through more and more on the subject of NAS, you may find these resources helpful and helping you in having an informed decision the first time you enter into this world of NAS. If you've enjoyed the video, click like as it helps me understand what I'm doing right and makes each video better than the last. And do take advantage of the free advice section of NAS Compares linked in the description. Genuinely free. It's made by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. It doesn't cost you anything. We won't do anything with your email. There's donate buttons. Use them. Ignore them. It's your call, mate. But ultimately, it's two humans who will answer your inquiries unbiased. It might take us a day or two to answer you because we're two humans with lives and jobs and we do things, but we try to answer everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.